Monday night. And I'd love to introduce the crew member to you. <laughs> this is a summer crew. Only one person showed up tonight. Mr. Donald Coat. Hello, everybody. <laughs> and it's a good thing he showed up. He's a teacher. <laughs> Otherwise, he'd be stuck with just me. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. And any kid, you're going to get a little bit of me tonight anyway. So, Heavenly Father, just thank you for this night. Just thank you for your word living in our lives. And I thank you, Father, that we can keep that word stirred up in our minds because we can never just let it sit there. You got to work it and do things with it and look for more depth and see more things. And Father, I just thank you for you just constantly showing us stuff. And no matter how much we think we know, we find out how little we know. And I thank you for this in your son's name. Amen. Oh, by the way, Father, I also want to thank you for John, Tudor, and Chris Ray, and Mike and Dana, and Barbara Stern, and Alan, and Bob Wasong, and anyone else who's ever been in on the crew. I just thank you for whatever they're doing right now. They're getting blessed, and that they're standing in your word, and in the light of your word. And I thank you for that in your son's name. Amen. Now, Mr. Don is going to share some words. And I'm going to mute myself. All right. <laughs> That's awesome. Complacency. Don't want to get complacent. Got to keep, got to keep reading the word, read the word. See something new all the time. And when you learn something, then you go back and read other stuff in it. It always affects how you understand what you thought you already knew. So you can't know too much. But you can know enough to think that you know enough when you really don't. <laughs> oh, I want to talk about honor. Honor tonight. A little bit about honor. First thing I learned was how to spell it. <laughs> There's two ways to spell it. You can spell it H-O-N-O-R. If you look that spelling up of the word honor in the King James Version, you'll get zero hits. Zero. But if you spell it H-O-N-O-U-R, the way the British English used to spell it, you'll get 136 hits. <laughs> and then in all the other versions, you'll get various quantities anywhere from 100 and 20 to 190 uh, places where the word honor occurs. But uh, when you hear the word honor, perhaps the first thing that comes to your mind is honor your father and your mother. That's the one of the, it's even one of the top 10 commandments. One of the top 10. Mm -hmm. Honor your father and mother. You know, kids, that's all they have to do. They can do anything they want, except as, or as long as they honor their father and mother. So what does that mean to honor your father and mother? Well, I looked up the word honor in the dictionary and I got a couple of pages because it you know how you ever, whenever you go to the dictionary and look up a, the definition of a word, and then they use the word as part of the definition, it really doesn't help you. You know, so it's like, uh, what does the word draw mean? Well, it means when you draw something. <laughs> okay. So anyway, so I'm looking up the word honor, and I find things like it's a noun, but it's also a verb. So that tells me there's more than one meaning. So it could be a homonym. <laughs> so anyways, as a noun, uh, 
it is something that uh, a person can receive and it is something that a person can give to another person. It's an honor. Uh, it is sometimes a place, uh, a place of honor. Uh, usually a place of honor is for a person who is being honored. Uh, it is a uh, recognition of respect and esteem. Those two words keep coming up in all the definitions. Uh, another example is uh, adherence to what is right. Uh, in other words, it's a matter of honor that I do this. You know, I have to do this this way because it's a matter of honor. I can't let anybody down. I have to do it this way. It's the honorable thing to do, and it's the honorable way to do it. So uh, then there's uh, you want to fulfill an obligation or an agreement. Say uh, you write a check and you sign your name on the check and it's for $100. And if you take that to the bank, they will honor that signature and honor that check and give you currency, cash, in the amount of $100. So they've honored that agreement. Uh, same thing with contracts. You can honor an agreement or you can dishonor it. So if you dishonor an agreement, you go, you go against the fundamental basis or standards of the agreement. And the word standards comes up a lot. So we've got respect, esteem, which is like your personal feeling, how you feel, your well-being, uh, adherence to uh, standards of conduct. Uh, you don't want to be dishonest. It's the honorable thing to do. You don't want to lie. That's dishonor honorable thing to do uh, what else we got here so anyways so to uh, to give respect to your parents is to do things that build up their esteem uh, that things that are acceptable to their standards uh, they teach you morals right and wrong basically is what morals are right the ability to recognize right and wrong or to judge between what is right and what is wrong uh, ethics which is your attitude towards those things which are right or wrong uh, different groups will honor people for different reasons they'll honor someone who is real good at promoting their standards but if somebody over here is not promoting their standards, they won't honor them. That's the way of the world. But is that how we are supposed to live? Uh, according to the scriptures, there are different groups of people that we're supposed to give honor to. It doesn't say if they're good. It doesn't say if they're bad. It doesn't say anything other than these people fit a category that we are to give honor to. We are to not go against the standard. Uh, we're not supposed to bring them down. We're supposed to build them up in esteem, uh, speak highly of them, favorably of them, positively of them. One of the things that me and my wife, Kim, do is uh, when we have a disagreement or we have, or we're out in public, we never put the other person down. We never belittle that person in public, ever, ever. You just don't do it. 
Uh, why? Because we are giving honor to our spouse. To dishonor our spouse is to dishonor myself. And, and, or for her to dishonor me is to dishonor herself. Uh, it makes you look bad. Or it not only makes her look bad, it makes you look bad. It's just bad ethics. It's bad morals. It's not the right thing to do. So if you are married or even consider even hanging out with somebody you like, don't belittle their peers. Don't make them look less than who they, who you think they are. Uh, after all, you like them for some reason. So the honorable thing to do is always treat them with respect and uh, build their esteem. doesn't mean you can't have a conversation and you discuss different points of view, different ideas, but at the end of the day, you are honoring that person. You love your neighbor as you would love yourself, and that includes your friends, your acquaintances, your relatives, your spouse, your your to be spouse. Uh, you just don't speak uh, down about them ever, ever. You just don't do it. There are others who receive honor according to the scriptures that we're supposed to give honor to. We're supposed to give people honor to those in authority. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 13 tells us all about that. Uh, give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe them taxes, pay them taxes. If, you, if revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. Some, some respect must be earned. But honor you, is a gift. You give honor. Honor is can be earned, but it, according to the scriptures, it's a gift that we give to another person. And we're supposed to do that to everybody. But we are supposed to give honor to our parents. We're to give honor to those in authority. Doesn't mean you have to agree with them, but you have to give honor to them. Okay, uh, honor to the church leaders. It says in First Timothy chapter five, verse seventeen, uh, the elders who direct the affairs of the church well are worthy of double honor. <laughs> back at you, Don. <laughs> oh, and back at me. Uh, double honor, especially those whose work is preaching and teaching. I, I'm terrible at preaching. I'm a little better at teaching than preaching. I'm just, in my mind, I'm not there. But teaching, I'm a, I, can, I can hold my own a little bit in teaching. But anyways, uh, the Bible says we're to give double honor to those who are elders in the church. So it's not a request. <laughs> honor those people. Uh, if you honor them, they will begin to live up to that honor, even if they aren't. Say they're not, they just say they're complacent. You know, if you are honorable to them on a regular basis, them and then honor. it also says that we're supposed to give honor to all men. So there are over a hundred references to where the word honor occurs in the scriptures. So when we go and read some of those, we'll find out a little bit more about the word honor. And uh, when we go to the scriptures, if we go to, let's see, Proverbs is a good place to start. Verse, uh, chapter 15 and verse 33. Don't have to look these up. I'll just read them for you. Just listen. Just listen. Uh, the fear of the Lord provides wise instruction. And before honor comes 
humility. Oh my, look at that, humility, there it is again. Pride and humility, kind of weaving its way into this honor thing. Uh, but before you, anyone gets honor, there's humility. Uh, Proverbs is full of this stuff. Uh, Proverbs 20, correction, 18, Proverbs 18, verse 12. Listen to this one. Before destruction, before destruction, the heart of a person is proud. But, in contrast, humility comes before honor. Uh, humility and honor, they are very closely connected. Very close. Uh, Proverbs 21, verse 21. The one who pursues righteousness and love finds life, bounty, and honor. Very cool. Like snow in summer, who? Or rain in harvest, who? Can't get the crops in. So honor is not fitting for a fool. Now there's a comparison. If you want honor, don't be a fool. Uh, a person's pride, Proverbs 29, 23, a person's pride will bring them low. But one who has a lowly spirit, a humble spirit, a humble attitude, will gain honor. Don't even have to work for it. All you have to do is, is be humble. Uh, wives are supposed to humble their husbands. Husbands are supposed to humble their wives. We talked about that. We're supposed to humble our kids. The kids are supposed to humble us. We're supposed to humble our uh, leaders. We're supposed to humble our church leaders, preachers, teachers. Uh, we're supposed to humble, uh, the kids are supposed to humble their parents. Uh, we're supposed to humble everybody. Basically, it's, it's being second you always put yourself second always put yourself a little behind someone else you always try to build up the people around you and that's humility always make everybody else better than they are that's what humility is uh, you are like the coach you're on the bench the players are the ones that get all the glory they're the ones that make the shots, make the the all the great plays. You are on the, the bench. You are coaching them all the time. It's kind of like that, being humble. You, uh, you want them to do good. You want them to be the best they can be. And when they become that, and when they do the best they can be, it's a reflection on you, and you end up with the honor. Now, that's why the coaches, they keep track of coaches' win and loss records, which is, I always thought was a little strange, but that's why. It's a, a reflection of them. But uh, there's over 100 of these in the Bible, places where... where the word honor is and we're supposed to give honor to God and how do you do that you make him look good you don't talk down about God all the time you do it's just going to be it's foolish that's what it is and it'll be it's just the you know, foot in the door towards your destruction uh, then I said oh Lord intervene for the honor of your name even though our sense us indeed we have turned away from you many times we have sinned against you give honor to god is to do what he asks you to do live up to his standards uh, by doing that you are honoring him by praising him you are giving him glory and honor uh, by giving by recognizing that he is the source of all of our prosperity that he is the source of our health, that he is the source of all of the good things in life. 
that uh, that is giving him praise and glory. So, and one more verse that I'd like to read to you is 1 Peter 2.17. says, honor all men, all men. It doesn't say what kind, it just says honor them all. And, but the, it also says in 2 Peter chapter 1 and in verse 17, God gave Jesus honor and glory. Honor and glory. God gave Jesus honor and glory. Now, why do you think he would do that? Well, he spoke what God wanted him to speak. He always did what God wanted him to do. He was God's plan to redeem mankind. He all God's eggs were in his in the Jesus basket. He was counting on Jesus to do the things that he needed to do to redeem mankind. He lived the perfect life. He didn't sin. He always did the will of his father. And he did that even to the death on the cross. And when uh, that happened, God had no choice. He, he was thrilled to be able to raise him from the dead. And he did. And when he did, he gave him glory and honor and all kinds of other good things too. So, and he's our big brother and he's on our side. So why not honor him and his father? It says in the Bible, if you honor one, you honor the other. So honor Jesus by doing God's will, honor God by listening to Jesus and in that still small voice in your head, doing the word, living the word, speaking the word, giving honor to all men. And when you do this, there will be rewards. So Heavenly Father, I thank you for the honor it is to be in your family. To have you as our Father, Jesus as our brother, and all these wonderful people as members of the family of God. And we just thank you and praise you and give you all the glory and all the love that we have. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.